Welcome to Lacole, I'm Chris Opie and this video is all about stretching. By the end of this video, you'll have a better understanding of why stretching can be beneficial, when you could consider stretching and how to stretch to help improve your cycling performances. Why should cyclists stretch? I'm gonna start with a little bit of a disclaimer and that is that the scientific jury is still out as to whether stretching is effective or not. That said, the principles behind stretching are returning your muscles to their resting state. That is, returning them to the condition they were in before you started exercise. Exercise places our bodies, our muscles, under a great deal of stress, which creates a training stimulus. However, recovering and restoring the muscles to their original function, ready for the next session, is important. And that's what stretching is all about. And whilst physiologists are still yet to decide whether stretching really is beneficial or not for your muscles, anything that helps return you to a state of rest and relaxation after a training ride, a bike ride, or a week at work, is gonna help your recovery, aid your performance, and get you ready for that next session. The reason for stretching is all about recovery, the time in which our bodies actually get stronger. When is a good time for us to start stretching? Any time you're warm is a simple answer. Even going for a short 20 to 30 minute walk, enough to warm up the muscles in your legs, coming home and doing some stretching after that is a great time. But equally, you can stretch daily after any bike ride that you do. Your hard bike rides are a perfect time because your muscles will be nice and warm. As long as you've done a short cool down at the end of the session, your muscles are in perfect condition to start stretching. Equally the same after a long ride. The only time I would avoid stretching is if you come home and you're freezing cold and soaking wet. In that case, the most important thing to do is get yourself showered, cleaned up and have something to eat. To help us understand how we're going to stretch, we need to address what it is we're trying to achieve. Generally speaking, in modern life these days, we spend a lot of the time in a hunched position, whether that's on our bikes, with our shoulders rounded and our chests closed, in a car, traveling somewhere, sat at a desk, perhaps working at a computer, or at home on the sofa in the evening. On the whole, these positions are conducive to creating tension at the front of our bodies, tightening up these muscles because they're never opened enough. This can lead to quite a lot of discomfort on the bike, and it's exactly this that we would like to address. Let's start at the top and work our way down. First off, we're gonna focus on the muscles that help us breathe in and around the torso. You'll often notice that lifelong cyclists can suffer from rounded shoulders, and this is because the chest muscles spend a lot of time in a constricted, hunched position, and rarely get the opportunity to be fully opened out. For this, you're going to need a doorway or a wall. You're going to want to place your elbow at 90 degrees to your body, your elbow and your upper arm, that is, against the wall, and then simply lean into it, stretching out the insertion of the pectoral muscle into the shoulder. As with all of these stretches, hold this for 12 to 15 seconds. Be sure to breathe really deeply throughout. You can always repeat it later if necessary. Before moving on to the next stretch, do make sure you repeat this on the other side as well. To stretch the left side of your body, place your right foot up and over across your left foot, and then simply bring your left arm up and over your body and lean to the right hand side. This will require a little bit of balance and good form. Make sure you don't lean forwards try and remain straight and lean as far to the right as you can. This next stretch is likely to be a little bit more difficult and uncomfortable and that's because of the sheer amount of tension in our hip flexor. Once you're happy you've acquired the correct position and the stretch is in that hip flexor, to enhance the stretch further, reach up above you with both hands interlocked, pull back with the shoulders, thrust the hips further forwards and then reach to your left hand side to stretch the right flexor. We're now going to move on to the quads which is actually one of the more simple muscle groups to stretch. Simply Grab your leg by the front of your ankle, not by your foot, pull it up to your glutes and hold with both hands. Push forwards with your hips slightly to increase the tension and pull tighter onto that ankle. Make sure it's the ankle you're pulling and not your foot. This stretch is generally speaking the first stretch that I ever conduct and that's because you can do it whilst you're still on the bike and that's stretching the calves. The easiest way to do this is to ride along with your cranks level, simply drop your heels 10 seconds with the right foot forwards, 10 seconds with the left foot forwards. If that's not quite enough, you can always repeat it again to help get rid of that tension in your calves. Good news is we've now made it to the floor stretches and these are much more enjoyable because you can continue to eat, answer your work emails, entertain your kids or watch television whilst conducting these stretches. Continuing the theme of starting high and working down, we're gonna target the glutes now. This is quite a generic stretch. You simply step the leg over your body and pull with your opposing arm. Hug nice and tight. The tighter you hug, the tighter the stretch. We're now moving on to the hamstrings. And arguably, yes, you could do these while stood up. 
Equally effectively to stretch them is while seated, but paying close attention to keeping a nice straight back. Make sure you lock your lower back into a straight position and then simply reach forward. You should feel the stretch throughout the entire length of the hamstring. It's really important not to cheat this one by bending your lower back. We can all get nice and low to our knees if we bend our backs, but the trick here is to keep the back straight and stretch the hamstring. Next up, we're going to target an often neglected set of adductors. These are the muscles that you rarely ever feel on a bike, except for when you're heavily fatigued and you make a sudden movement. That's when you'll start to get those horrible crampy twinges. Simply stretch these by bringing your heels in nice and close to your body and then pushing down with your elbows on your lower leg. After this, I like to move on to a stretch that kind of combines the last few. That is a hamstring, an adductor and lower back stretch all in one. Place the leg out in front of you that you want to stretch, reach over with your arm, stretching your lower back and really pull into that stretch. You can help use your foot here to angle that. That will also help stretch the tendons around the back of your knee as well. The sole goal of this stretching routine should be returning your body to a state of rest, helping kickstart the recovery process, meaning you'll be ready for your next training session. The key takeaways should be your breathing, maintain good deep breathing throughout the stretching, hold the stretches for 10 to 15 seconds each, and focus on your posture whilst doing the stretches. I really hope you found this useful and you put these stretches to good use. I'll see you in another video again soon.